Hello guys. Welcome to Manwa Ghost. Today I am going to show you a very interesting story, where our MC is a weak snake, but gradually he became a powerhouse. So, let's get started. Our story begins in a village where residents are rushing home as dusk approaches. A voice urges them to hurry before nightfall, as recent events have made it perilous. We see a man ringing a bell, encouraging villagers to secure their homes and prevent the old black snake from entering. One villager mentions that just a few days prior, the black snake devoured two individuals at the mountain god temple, one of whom was a Taoist. Another villager counters that there have been no recent reports of the snake attacking anyone, although many chickens and ducks have mysteriously disappeared from the village. A young boy suggests to his father that they should bring their chickens indoors for the night, even if it means dealing with the unpleasant smell, as it is better than losing them. The father agrees, acknowledging that the loss of their chickens to the black snake would be significant. As they hurry home, passing by the mountain god temple, the father remarks on the sudden chill in the air. Inside the temple, the black snake observes with glowing eyes, pondering whether the villagers are discussing him. He reflects that he doesn't recall being so old, and doesn't consider himself particularly frightening. However, he admits to having consumed the two humans the villagers are referring to. One of the humans had been crying out for the mountain god's assistance. Notes misunderstanding the human's pleas, the snake believed it was in distress and felt sympathy, deciding to grant peace by devouring him. Moments later, another human burst in, shouting about an elixir, appearing desperate and in agony. This human pleaded with the black snake to release his friend, who had been cultivating for a decade. The snake, still unable to comprehend human language, thought to reunite the two by consuming them both, not giving it much thought at the time. Unexpectedly, this act led to the black snake's enlightenment. It not only developed a demon core but also gained intelligence. From that moment on, it became aware of various threats including the individuals in black clothing who had previously pursued its snake catchers from a sect dedicated to snake cultivation. The snake recalled witnessing these cultivators effortlessly hunt a massive flower python, realizing the immense power of human cultivators, who could enhance their strength through rigorous training. They progressed through stages such as the QI refining stage, foundation establishment stage, and core formation stage, where they gained the ability to fly. Reflecting on its previous escapes, the snake recognized them as mere strokes of luck due to its ignorance. Now, with newfound intelligence, it understood that human cultivators posed a significant danger, and it resolved to survive at all costs. Consequently, the black snake determines that pursuing birds of prey or humans is too perilous and opts for a safer strategy stealing poultry instead. The stomach growls, reminding it of its hunger. It briefly considers that chickens and ducks are not very filling, and are becoming increasingly difficult to steal. However, it suddenly recalls a wealthy family in Shenzhen town that raises pigs, prompting it to investigate that opportunity. Upon entering one of the homes, the snake notices a portrait on the wall and reflects on how humans enjoy naming themselves, deciding it should adopt a name as well. Since it often hears itself referred to as Old Black Snake, it chooses the name Su Hei. The scene transitions to Qinjia town, where Su Hei has arrived and spotted the pigs. As he gazes at them, his size begins to increase, and he remarks that merely looking at the pigs makes him feel full. He pauses to ensure the humans in the household are asleep, and upon confirming they are, he begins to devour the pigs voraciously. One pig attempt to escape, making noise, prompting Su Hei to caution it against alerting the humans, who would surely kill him. Since the pig cannot comprehend his warning, he decides to consume it as well, silencing the remaining pigs. Afterward, Su Hei lets out a burp, declaring himself full, but it seems he has eaten a significant amount. He opts to rest for a while, as it is still the middle of the night and several hours will pass before the humans awaken. He chooses to take some time to digest before departing. The other pigs remain trembling, unable to make a sound. An hour later he hears a voice discussing the theft of a woman, followed by another voice suggesting they stop beating Chun Fan, since he is no longer breathing. The first voice inquires if Chun Fan is dead, 
and remarks that this is the consequence of stealing a woman from Master Kue. Two figures then approach the pig pen, carrying something. Su Hei awakens, realizing he has dozed off, and begins to climb the tree to conceal himself from the approaching men. One of the voices suggests they should dispose of Chun Fan's body in the pigsty. As Su Hei peers down at the men, he thinks that for now, he can only hide and hopes he won't be discovered. The two men, examining Chun Fan, conclude that he has completely stopped breathing. One dismisses him as worthless and proposes they feed his body to the pigs. They leave the body behind and exit, with one of them questioning whether he is imagining things or if the number of pigs seems reduced. Su Hei leans down and spots the lifeless body, interpreting it as a sign of bad luck and deciding he must leave quickly. Suddenly, the dead body opens its eyes, startling Su Hei. Su Hei contemplates the possibility that the man before him could be a zombie, just as the man awakens, proclaiming that he has finally been reincarnated. He refers to himself as an immortal, laughing in a manner reminiscent of a villain. The man reveals that he shares the same name as the host body, both being called Chun Fan, suggesting a twist of fate. With a sinister smile, he vows to avenge Chun Fan, leaving Su Hei puzzled about whom the man is addressing. The man further declares that he will not spare any of those responsible for the host's demise. As he inspects his new body, he notes the severity of its injuries, asserting that without his takeover, the body would have perished, yet he insists this will not hinder him. Meanwhile, Yi Su Hei realizes he must escape swiftly, but before he can do so, the man turns and spots him. He identifies Su Hei as a lowly spirit beast, while Su Hei panics, suspecting that the man, clad in dark attire, might be an immortal or a high-level cultivator, possibly even a snake catcher. The man, however, chooses to sit down, dismissing Su Hei as insignificant and unworthy of his attention. Misinterpreting this action, Su Hei fears that the man is preparing to capture him. The man then decides to unleash some spiritual energy to heal himself and intimidate Su Hei, releasing a powerful, dragon-like energy that manifests as a stone statue. He expresses surprise at the demon god Cauldron, a supreme treasure of the demon race, having reincarnated with his divine consciousness. Meanwhile, Su Hei remains oblivious to the true nature of the situation, mistakenly believing the man is casting a deadly spell against him due to his earlier theft of pigs. In a moment of distress, he contemplates the possibility of expelling the pigs, but given that several hours have elapsed, he realizes he has already digested most of them. As the man approaches the peak of his healing incantation, Yu Su Hei finds himself at a loss for action. Ultimately, he decides he has no alternative but to charge at the man, mouth agape, and consumes him entirely. After swallowing the man, Su Hei understands he cannot afford to relax just yet, and resolves to leave immediately, declaring that this place is no longer safe. As he makes his exit, we catch a glimpse of the man inside Su Hei's stomach. The man scoffs, asserting that a mere spirit beast dares to confront an immortal like him, indicating a lack of self-preservation. He gathers spirit energy in his fist, stating that he had offered the beast a chance to flee, but since it chose to attack, it is effectively inviting its own demise. He delivers a powerful blow to Su Hei's stomach, causing him to scream in agony as blood spills from his mouth. Following this, the man executes a fierce kick to Su Hei's abdomen, yet Su Hei reminds himself to remain calm, knowing he still possesses his demon core. However, the man has already located it and is preparing to strike. Yu Su Hei pleads with him, emphasizing that the core is his lifeline, but the man shatters it, commanding him to perish. The abrupt destruction of his core envelopes Su Hei in excruciating pain, causing him to writhe in agony, with a tree branch piercing his mouth. He laments that his entire body aches and questions whether he is dying, ultimately collapsing in a lifeless state, expressing his unwillingness to accept this fate. Tears stream down his face as he reflects on his newfound intelligence. Regretting that had he known this would be the outcome, he would have refrained from consuming the pigs. Meanwhile, the man feasts on Su Hei's insides, remarking that some snake meat will be just what he needs to restore his energy. 
Suddenly, the demon god Cauldron from earlier materializes, leaving the man puzzled as he attempts to reach for it. But the cauldron glides toward you, his demonic core. The man is astonished by this phenomenon, as a brilliant light emanates from Suhei's core. Confused by the situation, he is enveloped by the radiance. The demon god Cauldron transforms into a dragon spirit energy, leading the man to understand that the demon god has absorbed fragments of Suhei's core. He questions why the demon god would assist a mere spirit beast, only to realize that Suhei is no ordinary snake demon. The demon god then opens its massive jaws and lunges at the man, obliterating him as excess spirit energy bursts forth from Suhei's mouth and eyes. Suhei's body begins to disintegrate under the weight of this surplus energy, while the man, in his final moments, laments the unfairness of his fate, despite being an immortal. When dawn breaks the following day, Yu Suhei has shed his injured form, and even the pigs he had previously consumed have mysteriously returned. Although Su Hei feels pain after shedding his body and acknowledges the loss of his demon core, he remains unaware that it has been replaced by the demon god Cauldron. One of the pigs attempts to bite Su Hei's tail, which has grown longer after he consumed the demon god Cauldron. As the pig persistently nips at his tail, Yu Su Hei gently lifts it and begins to choke the pig, shouting for it to stop. The pig quickly scurries away as Yu He declares that he will devour them all. Observing his tail, he notices the damage inflicted by the pigs and expresses his frustration. He reflects on his survival, recalling that his demon core was destroyed by an immortal. He explains that the demon core is essential for any demon's cultivation, leaving him puzzled about how he can cultivate without it. Burying his head in the ground, he laments that his situation is hopeless without a demon core. Suddenly, he has a realization and questions how he is still alive, despite the destruction of his demon core. It becomes evident that the demon god Cauldron has taken the place of his demon core and is merging with him. Suhei looks at his stomach, where the demon core typically resides, and wonders how the demon god Cauldron ended up there, speculating that it may have saved his life by replacing his core. Additionally, he is astonished to discover that he possesses some form of X-ray vision, allowing him to see inside his own body. Testing this ability on the nearby pigs, he realizes he can also perceive the insides of other nearby creatures, pondering whether this is divine perception. He marvels at this newfound skill, noting that it is typically reserved for cultivators, and now he can utilize it as well. Closing his eyes, he finds that he can still access this ability, concluding that hunting for food and evading dangerous beasts and humans will be significantly easier from now on. Upon reopening his eyes, he discovers that there is more to it. It feels as though a vast amount of information has flooded his mind, reminiscent of the intelligence he acquired after consuming the two human cultivators earlier. He understands that he has also obtained the cultivation paths of Chin Fan. Suddenly he feels a sharp pain in his head, and recognizes the need to address it first. He curls his body into a circle, expressing uncertainty about the process, but believing it can aid in healing his injuries. He attempts to replicate Chun Fan's meditation technique, recalling that Chun Fan began by reciting, heaven and earth are the chessboard, and all beings are the pieces. He concludes that if he repeats this chant, the demon core will start to activate. A faint spiritual energy begins to radiate from the demon god Cauldron, causing the surrounding area to resonate with spiritual energy. The spiritual energy emanating from the environment starts to mend Suhei's injuries, visibly closing the wounds on his tail. He is astonished by the effectiveness of this method, noting that after just a few minutes of practice, his body is filled with spiritual energy, feeling as light as if he had consumed spiritual herbs. As he coils his body, Resembling a self-embrace, he reflects that meditation should primarily enhance cultivation. With healing being a beneficial side effect, he pauses for a moment, contemplating the fact that his demon core is shattered, making it impossible for him to store spiritual energy. He wonders if the demon god Cauldron has assumed the role of his demon core. However, he quickly dismisses this thought, deciding that he should first leave this place, and find a suitable location to rest for a few days before focusing on cultivation. In the background, one of the pigs remains relaxed in the area, 
and Su Hei concludes that he can grow stronger over time, advising himself not to engage with humans at this moment. He spots some pigs and decides he must indulge himself fully before embarking on his cultivation journey. After feasting on the pigs, the scene shifts to a river where Su Hei is bathing, using a rabbit as a makeshift cloth to clean himself. Since his enlightenment through the human pellets, new insights have been surfacing in Su Hei's mind intermittently, and the intensity of these revelations has been increasing daily since absorbing Chong Fan. One morning, after several days have passed, he suddenly comprehends what humans refer to as the cultivation system. He discovers that the demon beast cultivation system is similarly categorized into various stages, akin to that of humans, with stages named the spiritual stage, establishment stage, core formation stage, and nascent soul stage. Yi Su Hei currently resides at the peak of the first spiritual stage, which corresponds to the peak of initial human QI refining stage. Su Hei he dreams of spiritual beasts capable of splitting heaven and earth, igniting a deep yearning within him. He aspires to become such a beast, to escape his haunting past and live life to the fullest. He recognizes the necessity of cultivation. Thus, he resolves to cultivate, depicted in a cave with spiritual energy radiating from his body as he recites Chang Fan's chant. He notes that after several days of practicing the mysterious arts, he has realized its potential extends beyond mere injury healing, it can also enhance his physique and purify his meridians. This process not only eliminates impurities but also facilitates a shedding of his skin. He strikes the cave wall with his tail, expressing that a week has passed and he has undergone significant changes. His horns have lengthened and his scales have hardened, enhancing his majestic appearance. However, he vents his frustration, questioning why his body has shrunk to six centimeters. He insists that after shedding his skin, he should have grown larger, noting that he has decreased from 30 centimeters to 6 centimeters. A bird lands beside him, which he perceives as mockery, prompting him to swiftly kill it with a single tail strike. As he consumes the bird, he remarks that despite his reduced size, his speed and power have significantly increased, along with his flexibility, allowing his body to stretch considerably. He asserts that, with effort, he could even take down a large prey. Now confident that the demon god Cauldron has become his demon core, he senses his spiritual energy accumulating within it, preparing him for a breakthrough. However, he realizes that the energy consumption is excessive. While Chun Fan arts enable him to absorb spiritual energy from heaven and earth, mere cultivation without resources. To advance to the next stage, he requires a substantial replenishment of energy. In the field, he observes a wild boar feasting on watermelon. Su Hei notes that although wild boars are large and somewhat dangerous, he is now at the peak of the first spiritual stage according to the cultivation system. Since the wild boar lacks developed intelligence and is weaker than him, he stealthily approaches it, confident that with proper preparation, he can secure a delicious meal. He gathers some small rocks with his tail and mouth, believing they will suffice. Meanwhile, the wild boar remains oblivious to Su Hei Hei's approach from behind, continuing to feast on the watermelons. As Yu Su Hei Hei inches closer, he suddenly halts and drops the rock from his mouth. Before him stands the wild boar, glaring at him with a fierce expression, its body radiating spiritual energy. Su Hei Hei attempts to feign ignorance, encouraging the boar to keep eating. But the wild boar responds with a thunderous roar and charges at him. Su Hei Hei running away, questions why a mere wild boar is so intimidating. But soon finds himself cornered, turning to confront the boar. He realizes he can no longer flee and must fight for his life. Utilizing the rocks in his tail, he hurls them at the wild boar with great speed, determined to injure it first. To his astonishment, his attack obliterates the boar, leaving its body in ruins. Su Hei he watches in disbelief as the wild boar collapses, wondering if it truly succumbed to a single strike and questioning his own strength. However, he hesitates, recalling that wild boars can be cunning and might feign death. To be safe, he launches additional rocks at the seemingly lifeless boar. After confirming its demise, Su Hei exhales in relief, acknowledging how close he came to danger. Yet, recalling the earlier incident at the pig pen, 
he resolves to ensure the wild boar remains permanently incapacitated. By dismembering it, separating the head and limbs from the torso. As he begins to consume the wild boar, he notes that its meat is significantly firmer than that of pigs and possesses a unique flavor. Suddenly, he stops and spits out the meat, bewildered by its taste. It becomes clear that this was no ordinary wild boar, it contained a demon core. He realizes that the wild boar is actually a pig demon, which is quite unsettling. He explains that demon cores contain violent spiritual energy and cannot be consumed raw, otherwise the body would explode, leading to death. He notes that to absorb a demon core, one must refine it into a pill, but he lacks the knowledge to do so. Suddenly he pauses, contemplating that in the wild beast like tigers consume their prey, including both the body and the core. This raises the question of whether they would explode from eating a raw demonic core suggesting they would have gone extinct long ago. Su Hei He's expression brightens as he realizes that his understanding comes from humans, implying that he might be able to consume a raw demonic core, since the physiology of humans and beasts differs fundamentally. He then opens his mouth wide, attempting to swallow the demon core. Due to the size difference, he struggles momentarily before successfully consuming it. Almost immediately, a bright light radiates from his stomach and he exclaims that it is getting hot. The demon god cauldron within him begins to absorb the core, rapidly filling up. He feels an overwhelming surge of spiritual energy and shouts that he is breaking through, successfully reaching the second spiritual stage. His body becomes covered in spiked scales, and he marvels at how two of his scales have turned golden. Testing their strength on a nearby rock, he destroys it with a single blow, amazed at the iron-like quality of his scales. Suddenly, something catches his attention, and as he turns, he sees a human figure wielding a weapon, causing him to sweat. So that's it guys, if you want more, then like and comment, and subscribe to our Manhua Ghost YouTube channel for more quality full content. Thank you.